with the data conversations that were brought in, what did you learn and how can they be applied into your daily work, do you think? So a couple of things. Um, my roundtable was focused very much on actually how organisations start to leverage data as an asset. Um, and there were a couple of quite interesting viewpoints on AI, um, but I think the, the, our viewpoint as Accenture has always been that for you to actually leverage data as an asset, you need to switch out the foundations first. So we brought some of the conversations around it, which really is what we try to do with our clients. And one of the other interesting things that came up was around the ethics. So why, once you've switched out your foundations and you've leveraged uh, machine learning, machine intelligence, AI, how do you make sure that you remove or at least limit the amount of bias in the, the kind of the algorithm so that you're making the right decisions? But at the heart of all that, the roundtable panelists agreed it was to trust the data, data trust at the heart mm. of leveraging it as an asset. Do you agree, Frankash? Yes, I mean, there were some discussions in there in terms of, you know, data as an asset and also sort of bringing about value, uh, looking at the value of the data, but also trust in the data. Uh, what was interesting was uh, some topics which we we're seeing, you know, as emerging was the, were, uh, you know, in terms of sort of the research and, and the way the industry is moving. There was a lot of buzz about that. So, for example, um, how to actually combine data across industry to actually create new insights and new data products and services. So besides looking at using data to run the business more effectively, how could different data sets be combined to create new lines of business, new value? And therefore, you know, the conversation moved to what are the emerging data standards or, or lack thereof that actually not allow that to happen? So there was a comment about, for example, uh, Travel for London making their data sets you know, usable and there's hundreds of different apps that have sprung up. So there's a lot of value in opening up data. But then what are some of the GDPR related challenges about sort of data ownership and sort of data transfer? And how would that potentially be resolved going forward? So some new frontiers in terms of you know getting value from from data i don't know whether that was something that was discussed at your table yeah so yes yeah, so we had um, one particular client that was um quite focused on how they can create value from the data sets i think he worked for an assessment company and they are usually involved in kind of the recruitment process and he was he was talking about the fact that they had 43 billion data points that they needed to analyze and drive insight from but they didn't want to risk foul of, you know, um, California Data Protection Act, yeah, GDPR in Europe. All these different yeah. regions with different All these players, different yeah. regions with different. So how do you actually leverage um, the data without compromising your compliance obligations or actually yeah, risk um, data mm. breaches? So that was one. But the interesting thing about yours um, and that the, the thing around actually using cross um, data data sets across industries is actually the, the ECB are doing something very similar, which is they're looking at um, gathering data, especially in farming, they started doing that, but data across specific industries, anonymizing it and making it accessible to the wider you know industry because they're trying to drive innovation at that level. Mm. So that's quite interesting that it came out because I know the ECB are doing that. Because I know you're both sitting within quite different functions within Accenture despite having um, similar capabilities. So what do you think collaborates those two departments, do you think? And then actually, uh, could you yeah. discuss in more detail actually what you guys do individually within Accenture? Accenture, we actually pride ourselves in bringing all of Accenture to our clients. So it doesn't necessarily matter the division. I mean, internally, we're, we're structured quite, you know, in a way that allows us to build capabilities. But what is important is we pull resources together, mm. like having myself and Pankaj here, because yeah. the data problem or you know the data opportunity, you can't just use one set of skills. Mm. You need people that can store the foundation, you need the intelligence and the engineering on top of that, and then you need the data scientists that, so that is just how Accenture is structured. We're structured mm. to build into capabilities, but we combine all of those to bring to our clients. Cool. Exactly. And, and I think, you know, the, the domains of, let's say, platforms, engineering, data science and data management are intrinsically linked, yeah. uh, e even more so. And I think that was one of uh, the discussion points in our, in our sort of uh, fo focus group as well, which was how do you actually bring dis different disciplines together? What was refreshing was the talk was about, uh, for example, value and data standards, less so on the technology. Because I would, I would submit to you, if you were here maybe two and a half years ago, the talk would have been <laughs> maybe about big data platforms. But what was refreshing was the, talk, the conversation moved on to things like culture 
and the right kind of training and how to bring together the right kinds of roles. A more mature conversation about it. Ex- ex- yeah. Exactly. And, and therefore, you know, in, in terms of how the disciplines are, are, are linked, you know, one of the challenges with sort of taking a technology-led approach is uh, a lot of organizations have built data lakes, but then there isn't a way to actually sort of search and consume the data. So, for example, if you bring pull a data catalog in, that actually you know allows different data assets to actually be used by different personas. So that's one area, for example. And then also to your point about you know machine learning models and looking at the ethics and the explainability, there's a very key sort of data management set of disciplines there, which we need to augment our data science practice with. So increasingly, these are being linked closer together. And if we talk about the notion of data marketplaces, allowing collaboration, data exchange, both internally and externally, I think that you know it, it's literally a join up, but it's important to have the specialization like as a chapter, but if you look at a squad that pulls these together for the right use case, you know we do that quite seamlessly. Nice. Exactly. And, 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 sorry, Karen. sorry, I was going to say, um, and I know when I introduced myself, I said data management, but actually I do analytics management as well. So mm. once you've got analytics and you've got AI, how do you manage it? And there's a whole discipline around it because you know your models need to be kept up to date you need to make sure that you're being compliant and then the question of explainability comes in because actually a lot of the regulation we have especially in europe is driving yeah. transparency of the the models that we use to make decisions on data subjects i'm a data subject you are one so if you had you know a bank as an example refuse you credit yeah. now you've got every right to challenge that bank you've got every right to ask actually as a data subject, I want to understand how you've come up with that decision. And you have every right to actually correct where you feel that the information is wrong. Mm. Right. So all of a sudden, you know, banks and and organizations like the credit agencies, it's no longer sufficient for it to be done in a black box. Yeah, of because now they've got that, you know, regulatory element to drive yeah. to drive up So with all of these concepts in mind, what does the next year's data strategy look like for Accenture? Like what are the, the main aims or strategies that you want to employ? Well, I think uh, from, a, from a data perspective, a lot of it is going to be about increasingly uh, letting organizations drive value from data. And there's a lot of buzz about organizations wanting to become data driven. So it's actually explaining what that is and letting our clients actually take the next steps to get to that state of evolution, really. Okay, nice. That's I, I would, I'm, I'm firmly aligned with that. It's all about helping our clients become data driven businesses. So putting data at the core. So our strategy is how we better um, enable our clients to do that. And we internally, we're taking advantage of that. So we like to talk at Accenture about um, doing things in the new, and that is very much what we want to take to our clients. So how do we leverage that? Um, and one of the things that we talked about before was you know, the, the fact that we didn't, we talked about data, not technology. We made that actual comment when we finished our round table. So it's no technology. We're helping our clients move away from, I want technology, I want a data lake to, I've got a problem or I've got an opportunity I want to mm. take advantage of in the market. How do I use data to enable me to do that? And I think also just uh, one very critical element is, you know, um, there's a lot of innovation out there in terms of, let's say, technology, um, uh, software and so forth. Um, And a lot of sort of organizations are successful with AI in pockets. So actually doing AI at scale is one of our other sort of really, really big focus areas. So we've uh, released some research recently called uh, AI at scale. And that's backed up by some of our thinking in terms of scale AI. So what does it take to actually take the next leap to do this at an organizational level to really get the value from investments in data and analytics? You know, transforming to data driven, plus also doing AI at scale are really the key focus areas. Wonderful. Well, Belinda Prankash, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us.